Hi guys! In this video I will be going through all the display menus and settings and I will try to explain each and every single one. But before we start, make sure you click like and subscribe to get all my new videos. You can also follow me on Facebook and see more cool stuff related with 3D printing. And if you like my work and wish to help, you can with Patreon. So let's start with the main screen. On the main screen, we have the set temperatures for the nozzle and heat bed on the top and the current temperatures that are read by the sensors. Under the temperatures we have the X, Y and Z coordinates and if you see them blinking with a question mark it means that the printer did not run the home sequence yet and therefore the machine does not know where each axis is related with the end stop switches. Under the coordinates you have the feed rate which is the speed of all the axes in percentage and a mini graph that displays the progress of the current print. We click on the knob and we see several options with sub-menus. The first line with the up arrow is always the indication of the previous menu. So when we click on it we will be transported to the previous screen. The second line is the custom commands. This one is actually not available in some versions and it's unfortunate because it's very handy. You can always edit the firmware and activate this as I did with mine. And the purpose of this is to have some G-code commands for whatever you need. I have set some commands like move all the axes to home position and because at the time I was dialing my linear advanced value, I programmed different values to test with. But you can program other things like move the y-axis to the front or move to each corner of the bed to ease the bed leveling procedure for example. It's up to you really. Next we have prepare and inside we have many other options. First on the list is move axis. This will allow you to move each axis and buy a certain amount. Included is also the extruder, but remember that the extruder motor will only turn above a certain nozzle temperature defined in the firmware. So if you want to turn the extruder motor, make sure you turn the nozzle temperature above 180 degrees. Next we have the auto home. This will make the printer initialize a home sequence for the X, Y and Z axis. We can also home each axis individually by selecting Home X, Home Y or Home Z. These are very handy, especially when testing the end stops right after the assembly, repair or maintenance procedures. Next we have the set home offsets. I actually made a video explaining how to correctly set your printing area and in that video I explained the importance of the home offsets. Just check the video description for the link of that video. And we have the disable stepper option. This option will turn the power off to the stepper motors so that you can move the axis manually. Next we have preheat PLA and preheat ABS. In each one we can see preheat the nozzle, bed or both to a predefined temperature. I use this very often as I like to preheat the heat bed a couple of minutes before starting the prints so that its temperature is stable and even throughout the bed. So this menu is done, let's go back to the previous one. And now we can see the control and inside a bunch of more options. Inside temperature we can control the nozzle and heat bed temperature. This is similar to the preheat function I shown just now but in here you can select the temperature you want. Fan speed. Here you can turn on and off the layer cooling fan and select its speed. This value is not in percentage format but in PWM output value instead which means you select between 0 and 255 being 255 the same as 100%. I only use this to test the fan. Next we have the auto temp. 
According to information obtained in the Configuration ADV tab, AutoTemp seems to predict the energy needed to keep the nozzle temperature. Instead of waiting for the PID to trigger the power to heat up the nozzle, when the temperature drops, it tries to power it before the temperature drops. For the AutoTemp feature to work, you need to edit the G-code file with some extra commands. Next, you have the PID values. The firmware continuously calculates an error value as the difference between the desired temperature and the measured temperature and applies a correction based on the proportional, integral and derivative terms. That is what PAD stands for. Proportional, Integral and Derivative. In practical terms, it automatically applies accurate and responsive correction to control the temperature. In this menu, you can access the PID values. And next, you have the preheat configuration. In here, you can define the temperature values for the preheat options I mentioned before. Back to the control, you have motion. And in here, you can define all the velocity, acceleration and jerk settings. Under velocity, you can define the max velocity for each axis. It's the same as feed rate, and it's the maximum speed that each axis will move. You can also set the minimum velocity, but this value is normally always set to zero. You can also set the same minimum velocity for the travel movements as well. In the acceleration menu, you can define the default acceleration for print movements, the acceleration value for the extruder retractions, the acceleration value for travel movements, and you can also define for each axis the absolute max acceleration value. In the jerk menu, you can define the jerk values for X, Y, Z and extruder. Velocity, acceleration and jerk, they are all derivatives of each other. Speed is the rate of change of position, acceleration is the rate of change of speed and jerk is the rate of change of acceleration. And finally, the steps per millimeter. These will tell the microcontroller how many pulses it needs to send to the motor so that you can get one millimeter of linear movement. I also have a video explaining how to check the steps per millimeter. Check the video description for the link. Next, you have filament and in there you can define the linear advance K factor if you have the linear advance feature activated in the firmware. Once you know your ideal linear advance K factor value, you can set it up here. And you also have the volumetric extrusion. This one you should always keep it turned off. If you turn it on, you might experience under extrusion issues, as this setting makes calculation based on filament width and extrusion length, and normally it's set to 3mm in the firmware. The last options in the menu are related with the EEPROM, or in other words, the internal memory. These will only be available if the firmware has the EEPROM enabled in the Configuration H tab. Every value you change in the display will not be stored and will be lost if you power down the printer unless you click on Store Settings. You also have Load Settings to reload the EEPROM content. The Restore Failsafe will load all the values defined in the firmware into the EEPROM. Flashing the firmware does not change the contents of the EEPROM, so every time you flash a new firmware version that includes changes in values such as acceleration, steps, etc., you should always load them using the Restore Failsafe and next store them to the EEPROM before starting your first print. And finally, the Initialize EEPROM. In some versions, the Initialize EEPROM feature will only reset the communications with the EEPROM, while in some other versions, it will load the settings from the firmware and store them automatically to the EEPROM. In doubt, use the options above. 
there is one more menu that is only available while the machine is printing and it's the tune menu inside you have access to some commands such as the overall feed rate the nozzle and bed temperature the fan speed again the value is in pwm and not in percentage the flow percentage same as defined in the slicer and the baby steps most only allow baby steps in z and this is a very handy feature that i use a lot this helps to adjust the thickness of the first layer in very small increments and last but not least the change filament option basically it will pause the print and allow you to change the filament and afterwards resume the print and this is it hope you guys liked the video don't forget to click like and follow me for more videos related with 3d printing bye guys